Guest dives right into the deep end when it comes to high dividend yielding stocks, and it is paying off in a big way. The Wisdom Tree Large Cap Dividend Fund has been kicking out total returns of more than 19% over the past three years. Pretty good, folks. But is this now a crowded trade? Joining us in a Fox Biz exclusive, Jeremy Swartz, Director of Research at Wisdom Tree. They've got $13.6 billion in assets under management. So let me ask you about this. Dividend exchange traded funds made a huge splash, and they've been very successful. Look at your fund, three-year yeah. return there. Uh, but I'm wondering if this is a crowded trade and if you're concerned about that now. I, I've definitely been hearing some, some sentiment on that, that dividend stocks are getting expensive. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the stats I've been looking at at our last annual you know, rebalance, if you look at how dividends have changed and how prices have changed, we're now getting back to the peak dividend levels as of our latest rebalance this year. Uh, but prices are not back to their peak levels uh, from, from October 2007. You have to go up 25% more to get back to the peak price levels, but dividends are already back to their peak. So, so I dividends think are still dividends. Stocks are still about 25% cheaper than they were yeah, at the peak I, of the market. Yeah, okay. so I, I would say it's not a credit for okay. the price of their Okay, so that's interesting. Okay. Now, if you compare uh, them to the S&P, if you compare them to the Russell 1000, there is a return there. But can investors still bank on that return going forward? I'm curious. You know, it's interesting with the S&P last year, it had zero price return and had a 2% return all from dividends. And that's not unique in history. If you look throughout history, you know, in four of the last eight decades, you had more returns from dividends than prices, 1930s, 1940s, 1970s, and the 2000s. And so there is periods of time where dividends can outdo the prices, and I think that's the kind of environment people saw last year uh -huh. uh, in, in preference for the high dividend stocks. That leads me to my next question, which is something that we talked about before this segment, and it's, it's, here's your philosophy. If a stock goes up, but the dividend does not, right. you sell. Yeah, I mean, right? it's, it's okay. annual rebalance back to the dividend stream. Uh, an example is AT&T pays $10 billion of dividends, and we weight uh, AT&T in the portfolio. The $10 billion divided by the total dollar of dividends uh, in the large cap index, it's $240 billion. So about 4% weight. And if AT&T's price goes up but the dividends don't, we're going to sell it at the rebalance. And if its stock fell but the dividends didn't fall, we would add to it at the rebound. So that, that, but that strategy adds to everything that's in your portfolio. Yeah. So again, if the stock price falls but the dividend remains the same, you feel confident that they're going to keep with the dividend. And the dividend has become such an important question yeah. for so many CEOs and so many companies. Okay, uh, let's talk about overall strategy because you've got, you've got your main fund, which is DLN. You've also got DTN. And I think this is really interesting because this is a fund, it's dividend payers, it excludes financials. Yeah. Were people asking you for this? Were you getting questions about how to get away from financials but still do the dividends? Well, what's, what's interesting is I talked about how dividends are now packed to their peak level uh, from before the crisis. X financials dividends are 34% higher. Uh, it's really the financials that drove dividends down. You had a 20% decline in dividends in 2009, driven entirely by financials. And so they just have this unique set of risks today that a lot of people are worried about the leverage in the banks. And there was just this, you know, they have this different set of characteristics than the non-financial companies, particularly in the European markets. But even in the U.S. markets, people have been worried about the banks, and they wanted a simple, diversified way to get access to dividend stocks without the financials. And uh, that's what we provided with DTN. You mentioned uh, you mentioned AT and T. Some other names that you really like that are obviously major portions of either DTN or the other fund? You know, we don't have a subjective opinion on the individual stocks. We're a, a rules-based index provider, so we will track the indexes that we create, and we allocate to the weight by the, the actual dollar value of dividend streams, and you have a, a table of some of the five largest up there, AT&T, General Electric, Chevron. They all pay some of the biggest dollar value of total dividends that, that are paid in the market, so that's how we'd allocate the weight in, in something like DLN. Jeremy Swartz, Director of Research at Wisdom Tree. Interesting strategy. Very Thank interesting. You. Thank you very much, Jeremy. Thank you. Well, let's take a look at some of the stocks with the highest dividend yields in the S&P 500. Get the notebook out. Windstream provides broadband, internet, phone service, and digital TV packages. The stock is down about 5% over the past year, and they have a dividend yield a little more than 8%. So it's at 1197 right now. R.R. Donnelly & Sons is the second biggest dividend payer in the S&P 500. Shares are hitting a two-and-a-half-year Low today, I'll leave that to your imagination. Uh, the stock is down about 35% over the past year and has a dividend yield of about 9%. Now, the clear winner here is Frontier Communications, the nation's largest provider of communications services. The stock is down more than 50% over the past year, but yields the dividend more than 17.5% right now. So 422 Frontier Communications, just some ideas for everybody. All right, let's take a look at what these three stocks are doing right now. There is the full chart. These are intraday numbers again, Windstream, Donnelly, and Frontier Communications.
Fox Business Market Check. I have to say, it's not bad when you see the markets actually kind of come back after what was certainly a bad start this morning. And there was all this concern about Europe, and in particular the Greeks, and then Portugal. There's a lot of market chatter about Greece and Portugal and kind of where these countries are going. And frankly, U.S. investors are frustrated. Now, gold is actually down 1730. Uh, the Dow, again, down 15 points, well off of session lows, though, for the day. NASDAQ and the S&P are lower as well.